ripped up a suitcase and moved to the city. Hotels like the Regal and Majestic and that, yeah, didn't leave much option really. But a lot of people have been forced to leave St Kilda because um, they can't pay their rents. Yes. Yes, you know that? So sure. have used to be considered a very sleazy sort of down marketplace so rents were cheap um, there was a very very wide variety of people living in St Kilda St Kilda has a, a huge number of rooming houses so we had the traditional rooming house residents um, plus the cheap rentals meant we had a, a lot of low-income people what then happened of course was the developers moved in and decided that St Kilda being what's it, close to the city it's on the seaside, they decided that St Kilda could be like Double Bay in Sydney. Uh, this used to be, you know, a block of flats where elderly people used to live. How do you feel about that? Um, well, I just sort of like the idea that they're starting to utilise our beach areas and stuff. I think it's really good. What's happening in St Kilda, Jeff's really just a reflection of what's already happened to most of the inner suburbs of Melbourne. And that in turn is a reflection of a, an international trend, really, that uh, wealthier people are moving into the inner suburbs, the inner areas of um, big cities all over the world. It used to be such a grot hole, I suppose, you know, they don't want it like that anymore. Yeah, they want money, it's all about money. You've got your steady process of gentrification where houses that may have been previously tenanted get renovated and sold and owner-occupied. Um, the same thing with flats, especially with strata titling where a block of flats which was previously all rented if that's divided up uh, into the flats each being one on one title, you can then get um, a massive profit by just doing a bit of renovation and meeting certain fire standards. 
the owner or developer can then sell them all off as individual units. St Kilda Office has a strata title project which is an ongoing local campaign. What we do is we get the register and we find out who has applied to have their property assessed. When we've got the information on the name of the property, we then have a leaflet that was specially drawn up for this project and we leaflet all the residents of that property. And what that basically tells them is it tells them what rights they have. Often what happens is because the developers want to make as much money as they can, they leave the tenants in there, they do the uh, development and the renovations around the tenants and then they give them a 60 day notice when they've sold the property. So basically there's usually a 60 day settlement period so the tenants are there right up until the final day when the new owner moves in. Um, unfortunately this means that a lot of tenants are left without water, they have sewerage problems, you know they often have walls being knocked out in their actual mm. flat and we try and help those tenants first to get the restraining order which means getting an urgent tribunal hearing and then we help them apply for compensation afterwards. Um, unfortunately there isn't much we can do to help them relocate. About uh, ten years ago I think it became very apparent to um, both to the St Kilda Council and to uh, a number of residents in the community that uh, the decline of affordable housing in the area was having very dramatic consequences on uh, a number of residents in the area, particularly those renting and those on um, lower to middle incomes. And St Kilda has traditionally been a um you know, a place for uh, people of low income. I mean, I was born in, in this uh, suburb, and uh, you know, now I can't eat. For, I can barely afford to live here. I live in a block of flats of, of ten people, and I, I'm, I'm a worker. I actually go and work for a living. Where I'm not saying they're not working, but they're doing a different sort of living, and that's the only way they can survive. I mean, the areas for everyone, and so I guess. It's pretty multicultural and sort of very cultural as well, so excluding low-income people, I mean, isn't beneficial, I guess. Rents are going up um, very quickly, uh, much quicker than incomes are, especially fixed incomes like pensions and benefits. So um, people are gradually going into housing-related poverty, and um, their rent is something they can't sacrifice. So they usually cut back on, on, on food, on, on entertainment, on, on clothing um, and gradually become poorer and poorer and more impoverished in the process. I, I noticed the price of um, one bedroom flats has gone up a fair bit. Yeah. Um, it's nearly impossible to live on your own now. They're all paying a hundred dollars just to live by yourself. It's a bit you can get a rent increase on a property once every six months. You only have to get 60 days written notice, that's two months. But there's no limit on how much they can increase the rent. It's market value. So what has happened in St Kilda is even people who have been living in places where the landlord hasn't come near the place or hasn't affected a single repair, they find that if they complain about their rent increase, the inspector might come out. And sure, the inspector's taken into account the number of repairs, the state of repair of the property, but given that the market rents in their area are so high, they still find that the rent increase is judged to be not excessive or if it is judged to be excessive it's only ten dollars in excess of what it should be. Economically that's just the way it is nowadays you know if you haven't got the money you can't afford to live here it's as simple as that. I don't live in St Kilda. Yeah. At some stage we will get we will reach the limit of, uh, of uh, required rooming houses but I would say it's not for many years as yet because St Kilda is a uh, not so much a transit but a, a people are attracted to it and uh, they like to live here, it's plenty of transport and the, the whole aspect of it is that uh, Rooming, rooming houses are essential.
St Kilda Rooming House Issues Group was formed basically to manage this house. It was apparently a pretty rough sort of place when the Ministry did buy it. Uh, it was one of the earliest places bought um, sometime in the early 80s. I found a good um, basically, um, having a low income, which the um, which, which, uh, Social Security uh, provides, so it's the best, best available. I used to have a house, a rented house, in the uh, uh, Havelock Street, St Gilda. I found it very good, and uh, I'm one of the, of the first ones. I'm one of the first ones who, to be here, and I found it very much, very much good. No, no complaints. Evicted. There are two types of eviction. There is legal evictions and then there's also illegal evictions. Now, the most common that we have here is where people turn up with a 14-day notice to vacate for rent arrears. What happens is when people are 14 days behind in their rent, this is if they're covered by the Residential Tenancies Act, they can be given a 14-day notice to vacate for the arrears. Now, a lot of people think that they have to go then and, and they move out. But a few other people ring their agent, they've had a problem, they've lost their job, something else has happened, and they find the agents are very unhelpful in a lot of the cases. And so they come here and ask if there's anything that we can do. I have uh, known some friends who've been evicted, yeah. Um, uh, usually illegally, um, through tricks, but uh, I mean, uh, basically it boils down to the fact that uh, Landlords and owners think they can get more money, so they kick somebody out, slap a coat of paint on, double the rent, and they get it. Do you see people have been evicted? Oh, yeah, all the time, every day. Myself. Yeah? <laughs> well, how many years have been trying to get me out of a place, but uh, I'm still here. Oh, that's like, good. Like, yeah, it's bad news, you know what I mean? Plus you got the coppers hustling here and all that shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's happening all the time. People getting thrown out of the front and saying, oh, where you meant to go? No way, those people can't help you. They help you half poor, but you know what I mean? They don't really help you that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, what can be done? Yeah, that's it, what can be done. You told me that you've been there five years, that your job's casual, that you got behind in, a, in rent. You're only one month behind. And what you say to the tribunal is that, that you're well now. Unfortunately, some landlords don't realise that they can't just throw someone out of their house, that you can't be evicted unless you have a warrant of possession which is executed by the police. Um, so sometimes people turn up here and tell us that all their, they've gone home, uh, all their property's on the front veranda. Often this is because they are in arrears of rent, but sometimes it's not. It's just that the landlord has decided to get them out. Um, and then we can help them by getting them to get an urgent hearing at the tribunal they can often be reinstated into the premises. Um, if there's arrears that can be sorted out, they can come to some agreement. And also, they can get compensation for that. There's no, it's still structurally sound, uh, it's looking a bit tatty around the edges. Now what they wanted to do was uh, put a massive development on this in about the mid 80s, um, about an 18 storey block that would be high cost apartments, offices and, uh, and uh, an art gallery and restaurant down the bottom. Um, Local residents really jacked up about that and that along with the Esplanade Hotel plans um, was one of the reasons why uh, the Turn the Tide group got into power on council and groups like Save St Kilda formed and um, 
everyone in, in St Kilda, like the Tenants Union and the people that worked at the Salvos, just all ganged up together and said, hey, this has got to stop. Um, so about 200, 300 people um, got very active. We started holding meetings, we started lobbying the uh, local council, we started lobbying state politicians, we had petitions, we had stalls outside, we had banners on the building, we got a lot of you know, media coverage and from there it became a much sort of broader movement of people interested in the issues and not just the particular buildings. We then decided, right, we're going to campaign on council, we're going to put objections in as much as we can and there was a big swing at the next council elections and quite a few Turn the Tide candidates got on. The state government saw that and they imposed an eight storey height limit right along the upper esplanade here. So that was one big victory for starters. Older person, yeah, that, of course. A lot of the elderly people, uh, they've got nice views. They've, um, they can see across to the bay, they can see across to the city. And um, until they were asked to leave, they, did, they really, a lot of them didn't know how well they had it. Right. So it was a big, very depressing. I think uh, so much so that, um, well, all right, Mr. Con had a trouble with his heart. Right but this uh, didn't help them either. No. And I guess for a lot of the older ones, it was that sense of community. That well, that's a typical example of um, planning by neglect, allowing the owner to neglect the properties to the point where he can apply for a demolition permit. I think that he should be penalised a percentage value of the property for allowing that, that property to, to get to that state. All those hotels up the top of Fitzroy Street that were once providing accommodation for low-income people and now they're all closed while people are going homeless on the streets. Did you know that one person owns all four hotels and is applying yeah, to Yeah, I did, I did hear that and I heard that they'd demolished, they were applying to demolish them. Yeah, uh, green something or other. Greenfield. Greenfield, yeah, sounds like a little prick. You hear a lot about a lot of property owners just leaving their buildings derelict so that they can um, demolish them. Well, I was living at the Majestic uh, when they uh, told us we couldn't live there because it was a fire hazard, so they kicked us all out. And uh, since then, uh, not all the efforts of uh, the arsonists in St Kilda have managed to burn it down. This is called Club One. Um, this ended up as a compromise after there were some horrendous development proposals in the um, mid-80s, uh, talking about 20-storey uh, or 24-storey developments on this site. Now, this is eight storeys, and have a look at the size of that. It's just yeah, it's grotesque. Massive, yeah. And, I mean, you can see what local people think of it. Um, just yeah, notice a few broken windows there as we came round. Yeah, well, I mean, one can't condone sort of illegal destruction of property, but on the other hand, the fact that it happens is just an expression of um, locals' dislike of the building. I mean, it just is so out of character here. It's really sterile and they've sort of tried to make it a little bit uh, architecturally, you know, friendly, but it's just not, it's just some in slabs. What do you think of the Club One Hotel, the other one up on the Esplanade? It doesn't look very nice actually, the architect could have done a better job, but I mean, it, it might bring in good tourism. Condominium type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't like that. I mean, it's a pity the venue's gone, I think you know, it's a pity those sort of rock venues are going, but um, I think it's a quite attractive looking building, yeah. This building might be a bit ratty, but it's still a, a great example of the 30s deco architecture that makes St Kilda interesting, while you have a look at that monstrosity up there, and uh, if that's in keeping with St Kilda's character, with its deco motifs and its little turret up there, then I'll eat my hat. But I don't mind tourists sort of coming in, but I mean, I don't like to see the way that uh, St Kilda's changing and a lot of the development. I think they should try and keep as much of the character of, of St Kilda as possible. Mm. Do you think more could be done to...? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. There should be a lot more uh, 
uh, public participation and I think the councils should get their act together, you know, architecturally. The St Kilda Council has tried to um, buy and develop quite a lot of uh, estates or blocks of flats or whatever and make them uh, public housing for long-term traditional residents, not always elderly people, but um, the rest of them just have to leave. It's called the linkage program and what they do is link development to provision of, of human services, social services. The, the scheme works in terms of any development that goes ahead or is approved, the developers have to pay a, a fee per square foot. That fee is then used to provide housing within the municipality. Um, that could be adapted to the Australian conditions. The good thing about it, I suppose, is that what it's doing is making developers pay for the benefit of the infrastructures that are already there. Following Council's decision not to try to control subdivisions, we did decide that a long-term strategy would be to find ways in which to encourage developers through a mixture of controls and incentives to provide um, affordable rental housing. Um, that has been uh, a phenomenon which Australia has done very badly at. Well, you know, just all around where we are, all the flats are sort of being renovated and it's just, you know, I think a lot of people are sort of moving out and other people coming in. And it's really sad. So we love living here, it's great. In St Kilda, I don't think we've, um, we've got the same sort of problem as some of the outer urban municipalities have. We are very much um, supporting medium density housing. Um, the case of the, the venue site is, is a good one. Um, it's a site that council owned, it wasn't used for residential purposes. When we sold it to the Ministry of Housing after a, a tender process um, and they're going to build a seven storey block of elderly persons units. Um, and uh, that's uh, an example of how we're trying to increase the density of housing so that more people can enjoy the sorts of qualities that are in St Kilda and to maintain the, the um, proportion of residences in, in the municipality. In the inner suburbs of Melbourne you've got a pub on every corner, you've got cafes, you've, you've got life. If there's a hotel being developed or being built in a condition of approval for, for a permit to, to build a hotel, then perhaps a percentage of the rooms should be allowed for low income earners. What's happening now is that there have been all of these delays which we created um, that we argued needed to be in place so that people could consider the issues. Now that the economy has um, taken this sort of downward dive, nobody can do anything anyway, which means that it's a good time to really examine what the planning implications are, what the implications of these appeals are, and what kind of city we want here and what kind of development we want here. Been closed down and moved away thanks to the fire department and other regulations and developers. Same old story. What can be done about it? Um, change of attitude in the general public, I suppose. A bit more support. People don't understand. Basically, people don't care as long as they're OK. The Tenants Union has campaigned for some time to have only just cause evictions, which means you can only evict someone for a reason. Currently, there's a six-month notice to vacate for no reason. Um, so I guess the Tenants Union work is very, very important and is becoming more so given that there's this huge increase in the number of people who will be renting for the rest of their lives. You can't expect someone to live in, in crappy conditions and I think that in St Kilda they expect them to and charge a fortune for them. I think it's improving all the time. I think development's good for the area? Or? Oh yeah, it's cleaned up a lot too. I think it's changed for the worst, you know. I think. Um, uh, governments and local councils should have a look at their priorities in terms of what they really want, whether they want a community or they, they want a shopping mall. You know. now, I'm in a position where I can't really afford to, to buy a place down here by my own place, so I'm just sort of one of those people who has to rent and, and you know. Local people can organise and there are various groups around, but like they're up against um, an infrastructure that's very strong. It will get to the stage where a lot of us can do something about it though. Because I want to stay here, I mean I'm really, that's it for me, I want to stay here forever, I don't want to move. Well, St Kilda's a wonderful area to live and you can't blame it. People, other people want to live here and, you know, it's, um, and, uh, you know, want to move in here and, and live and so things go up. I mean it's, um, it's 
but there has to be that balance as well, you know.